What's up everyone, Karu here, and welcome to another episode of 4.5 Now What? We don't have Winston here today. We're gonna be making content very soon, uh, but I've been busy taking some titles, so he had to wait a little bit for his next lesson. But anyways, today I wanna to talk about fundamentals. It really doesn't matter if you're a 3.0 or a 5.0 or anything in between. If you don't master your fundamentals, it's very difficult to improve at tennis. It really is the foundation of your game. And from once you build that foundation, then you can start exploring all the, other, all the other things you can do on court and create your own game style. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you five simple development points that will help you build a solid foundation for your game. Ian Westerman from Essential Tennis also posted a video about this topic recently that I highly recommend you watching. I'm gonna leave a link down below. In the video, he argues that amateurs actually have way too much information nowadays. There's always a fix to something. You miss a shot, you can pull out your phone and go online and find the, the fix to the short forehand, the fix to this, the fix to that. There's too many quick fixes. And the problem with that is that it creates this lack of direction. Where are you going? Right, if you're always looking for a quick fix here and then a quick fix there and you're, you're just not going towards one goal, you're always just looking for a little hack to get better. But don't worry, I'm here to fix that right now. Let's give you some clear goals with five things that you need to focus on and master. First area you need to master is your ready position. This is one of the most common mistakes I see with amateurs. Every time I, you know, I teach someone new, uh, it's something I have to remind them. Yet it's very overlooked. What do I mean by that? The, the ready position, right? You hit your shot, now you're here, you're in ready position waiting for your opponent to, to hit to you. What I see is players being consistent with it, meaning that you know, they will hit a shot, and then they'll hold it with a forehand grip and then they'll hit a backhand and then they'll stay here with the backhand grip and then all of a sudden the ball comes to the forehand and they like, oh my God, I need to switch grips, right? So it, it, it looks a little bit kind of like all over the place. I'm here and then I go to the back and I'm holding out to a back and now I have to switch to a forehand and then you're just kind of always starting. Sometimes it's a bit too low and you, you start from too low and then you start from too high. It's all over the place. So for example, myself, I hold it with the forehand grip at the bottom, right? A lot of people, they have the left hand or the non-dominant hand on the throat. I can't do that. So I'm gonna actually slide it down to the grip. And all I need to do is switch from backhand, from forehand to backhand. And then here I just slide it up and I have a forehand. Other players do it differently. Some people just hold it here with a backhand grip. Some people just hold it with the forehand grip, switch to the backhand. You have to figure out which one you're most effective with, like which one can you do it faster. But here are a few checkpoints that you need to keep an eye out. First, obviously the grips, right? Like, are you gonna stay with the forehand grip, with the backhand grip, both hands on the grip? Doesn't really matter, find what works for you, but be consistent with it. The second is actually, body position, right? Like I wanna feel like I have a nice wide base, at least like a racket's length wide base. And this is my ready position. I'm leaning forward a little bit, but again, make sure it's consistent, okay? I'm gonna hit my shot. I'm gonna go back to ready position. Boom, I'm gonna hit my shot. I'm gonna go back to ready position. Gonna... See, the end of my stroke is here. It's not up here and then I'm watching and then, oh my God, the ball's coming. I have to start a, a weird swing. Ready position, hit, ready position, all right? The second thing is footwork. Now this is a topic that can be a hundred videos. So I'm gonna trim it down to two parts of footwork that are non-negotiable. Regardless of your athleticism, um, of your age, you can do this. The first thing, it's be on your toes. You don't have to be rougher intense here, don't have to move like Carlos on the court, but don't be on your heels. This here doesn't work, right? In between shots, I'm on my heels and then, oh, I have to move forward. Oh, you see, that doesn't work. I need to feel like I'm on my toes. I need to feel light on my feet. I don't have to move a lot, but I need to feel light on my toes, okay? I, my heels are only touching the ground as I'm about to hit the shot, okay? Number one. Number two, it's obviously the split step, the most Im 
important part of footwork is the split step, right? If I'm on my toes here and I, boom, just give it a little bit of a split, I can split, I can push to the ball. I don't have to be very fast. I can just make sure I'm splitting and I'm pushing, I'm splitting and I'm going to the ball. That allows me to, again, feel light on my feet. You don't have to be super intense. But if you're able to actually do your split, because that split is gonna allow you to push, split, push, split, move away from the ball, split, move to the ball, that will allow you to flow on the court a lot easier. You wanna time the split step as your opponent is kind of hitting the ball, the ball is already leaving the racket as you're landing on the ground, and that allows you to know the direction and split and push, right? I can't, if I'm too early with it, then I'm stuck on the ground, right? If I'm obviously too late, it's gonna be hard for me to move. So finding that optimal, optimal spot where your opponent is about to hit, you split, and by the time the ball left their strings, I already know where it's going, and I can move towards it. So just quickly about the split step, a tip I usually give to a lot of amateurs that come to me is to just kind of have this count in your head. As soon as you hit the ball, you have like a one, two, split, count obviously depends on the pace right so it's like let's say it's at a fast pace i'm gonna go one two split 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 but obviously if your tempo is is slower right you still can have that so i can go one two split one, two, split. One, two, split. One, two, split. But if you hit it a little faster, one, two, split. Right, it's always gonna depend on the speed of your shot. But you can find kind of the tempo that your matches are being played on average and have that one, two, split cue and it becomes a lot easier uh, to time the split step. And before we continue, as you can see, I draw a lot of my inspiration for this video is from my lessons, from my time on court, because it's during that time that I see a lot of the mistakes players are making. So we made a free guide highlighting three of the major mistakes I see amateurs making, and obviously how to correct them. So if you're sick of losing points you deserve to win, go to top3mistakes.com and download our free guide. Again, top3mistakes.com, just put your email, download the free guide, it's going to help a lot. We put a lot of work into this and I think you're gonna like it. And now let's go back to the video. Number three is know your grips, right? Like look, I don't care if you're playing with full Western forehand, semi-Westerns, more continental, your grip on your back and it, it doesn't matter, but you have to stick to a grip and that's why, you know, that being good at your ready position is gonna allow you to always have the right grip as you're about to hit the shot. Obviously on the serve and on the volleys, on the slices, we wanted that more continental grip, right? Like we're holding a hammer here. The other strokes are gonna have a little bit of variation, but be consistent and be confident with your grip selection. The last thing you want is to just be going through grip changes all the time. That, that would be crazy. Uh, you, you're not gonna get anywhere. So be consistent, trust your grip, and go at it. Number four is understand where the power is coming from on each stroke. On the forehand side, or on my right side, power is gonna come from my right leg, my right hip, and on my backhand side, or if you're lefty on your forehand side, my left side, it's gonna come from my left leg and my left hip. That, that will allow me to hit consistent ground strokes over and over. Once you understand that, then you're gonna understand weight transfer. You're gonna understand that tennis is basically played on one leg, right? If I'm getting pushed to the back and maybe I have to go open stance, power from my left leg. If I have to step in, I'm gonna weight transfer to the right. On the forehand side, te we tend to play a little bit more open stance at the higher level. Obviously, if you're more amateur, you're gonna play closed stance a little bit more, but still, you're gonna be pushing from that right to left. And that, that allows me to play tennis a lot easier. See, nice unit turn, and I push with my right. Nice unit turn, push with my right. Nice unit turn, push with my right. You see, I'm playing tennis with my, my big muscles, right? My left, right, hit. You see, I'm pushing with my left, pushing with my right. 
pushing with my right, pushing with my left. Obviously, you need a good swing and all those things, but the more you master this, the easier it becomes. And the last one is probably the most overutilized piece of coaching advice ever is watch the ball. I know it's so simple, but I've been literally telling myself during matches recently to just watch the ball. But it's not just like watch the ball, maybe a contact. I'm talking about track that thing the entire time. The ball is giving you all the information you need to make a decision to what kind of shot you're gonna hit next. So if we're hitting, I'm tracking that ball from the moment he leaves my racket all the way to the opponent and back. My eyes are on that ball the entire time. I do not worry about anything else. I just wanna track that ball down like my life depends on it. Because if you can track it quickly, let's say off your racket, you notice that, oh, that's not really a great ball. I might be on defense, I need to to maybe back up a little bit, or I just hit a great ball, I might be on offense, because I can track that ball, I can see it's going deep very quickly, and then obviously, as you track the ball, it's gonna be easier for you to time your split step that we talked about early. So just to put a bow on it, here I'm gonna hit lefty, I'm gonna try all those things. Basically, number one, I have a ready position that is a little bit different than my usual ready position. I actually go like this when I'm lefty, instead of this, like I'm righty. So my ready position, I got a nice wide base, okay? I'm, not, I'm gonna be on my toes. I don't have to move like crazy, but I'm gonna be on my toes. I know my grips, I know my split steps. I also know my weight transfer, right? If it comes to my forehand side, I'm gonna push with that left leg, my back and side, I'm gonna push with that right leg, and I'm gonna be watching the ball as much as I can. And I'm not gonna think at all about technique, obviously. Again, if you're more of like a 3.5, 4.0, you already know what you have to do technically with your unit turns, all that stuff. Now I'm just gonna use those fundamentals and let it fly. Here we go. And push on my toes, split. I'm really watching the ball a little extra. My toes split, moving, watching the ball a little extra. Pull, boom, on my toes the entire time. I can be here all day long. Oh, I missed it. See, that's obviously super awkward <laughs> playing lefty, but I was just thinking about those five things, the fundamentals that I'm still able to hold a pretty high quality rally.